Hey guys, this is Mark from 65TurboGarage.com and I am surrounded by quite a mess. I have started this video at least twice before and kept getting deeper and deeper into uh, new discoveries. But uh, if you read my uh, last blog post, I ran into some issues and uh, blew my motor basically. Uh, head gaskets, cracked head, or cracked cylinder. Or all three. Um, carbon blowing out the tailpipe, water, uh, steam, the whole bit. I blew the head gasket out about three quarters of an inch. You can see it sticking out from underneath the, the head, so not good. And at first I thought that I could get away with uh, just a head gasket, and then I needed head repairs for your typical head cracks. And, uh, <clears throat> and anyway, as I got deeper into it, it was certainly uh, a lot worse. And that's totally typical. If you haven't done much work on cars or any work on uh, a rebuilding to this depth at all. Um, usually when you get into something there's a lot more to see. And I expected that, but when I got deeper in and uh, was getting ready for the assembly, I'd gotten all of my uh, pistons um, and uh, all the bear most of the bearings anyway all the components to get ready for reassembly and I had a buddy over here looking at the motor and I just happened to have the the light just right and looked down and saw one of the cracks in the block went all the way down into the cylinder now you can get away with a cracked block don't touch the crank if you got a cracked block if you just want to do a good, quick refresh hone of the cylinders and and uh, you, you can get a few more miles out of the motor while, and give you time to do, get a new motor or do a full rebuild on one. However, uh, if you get it into the cylinder, then you're, you're pretty much done because behind that cylinder wall is the uh, water jacket. And so now you'll have coolant seeping into the crankcase, getting into your oil, and you can see the mess there. So that's what this is. It's my old motor. And this is the new block. So I have already started uh, videoing a lot of the process of what I've done, so it might seem a little bit disjointed. Um, I'll, I'll get out a, a series of singular videos showing individually what I've done, and, uh, and then I'll try to get it all in one video as well. But it might look a little bit disjointed, but that's why, because I kind of had to keep going back and, and restarting but I've got a lot of uh, valuable video that's already done. Um, so to get you up to speed on uh, where I'm at at this point, this is an optimizer block. This is an optimizer block with cracked heads and a cracked block. And that's not supposed to happen, most of you will say, and most of you will be right. However, uh, whenever you try to make a determination of the durability of something that's under normal circumstances if you have a motor in your rig and you do heavy towing and or you, you drive it daily or regard or you or you drive it dropping the clutch light to light um, that's that's the motor that you're putting a high stress on the, there's a difference between that and abusing the motor and uh, in the article, I kind of give a rundown on exactly the kind of abuse that I put this motor through. And it was inadvertent, but I basically had uh, caused an overheating situation on the first day. The top radiator hose popped off while I was under load going up a hill and uh, ca caused a little bit of thermal shock there. The injectors were terrible from the get-go, and I had no choice but to, but to run them. And from the looks of the pistons, it's pretty classic. Um, piston abuse from really terrible injectors. Oh gosh, uh, my water methanol injection was supposed to, was advertised as having anti-drain uh, nozzles on them, and they didn't. They drained all of, they filled every cylinder full of water overnight one time and hydrolocked the motor. Um, gosh, what else? Uh, basically putting stress testing on the motor through my uh, uh, radiator article series and and getting thermal data on the stock radiator compared to the champion radiator and so anyway this is basically the test mule from for the website and with all the work that I'm doing and getting in there um, it, it and and learning along the way 
this time along, uh, I got in there and pushed the fitting out of the way and, and um, pushed it up against the turbo, causing it to melt and lost all my coolant when I the motor was running, not overheated, but running very hot, towing an RV, going up a hill, just pick, cr uh, cresting the peak. And uh, so it was under full load and full heat. And that's when that thing decided to melt and massive thermal shock is what caused this current one. So anyway, what I'm getting at is putting your, putting your motor through uh, hard use is different than just outright blatant abuse. There's some other things that I, I, I have two or three other things that happened that I'm not even remembering right now. I know, but uh, anyway, so I was, I was pretty surprised that there was as much damage as there was with this motor, but then going back and reviewing all of the horrible things I've done to the motor, it's, it's amazing that it ran as well as it did. I mean, it's, if you've seen my startup, it was below freezing startup first, um, first start of the day and it just fires right up, runs really smooth. Everything ran great. And yet the motor was, was really showing some abuse. <laughs> so there we are. Um, uh, I'm going to show, start from the block, show the different things that I'm going to do with the block. I'm really excited about this block um, to, to see that, uh, to see how well it's going to do. And of course, that's going to be an overtime thing, but basically starting with what's considered the worst block. I had one of the best. It's not a P400, but an optimizer. And now I want to see what we're going to do with what's considered as one of the worst and all of the little tricks and and uh, components that are available to you guys in order to get good life out of this motor um, and so i'm going to start with that and go all the way up to final assembly and getting it in there and and hopefully be able to show uh, something very useful to you and at the very least show that you guys can build your own motor as well that's pretty intimidating to a lot of people um, but it's when you break it down to individual components and um, especially if you can see how it works then you can you can do it yourself I'm quite certain as you can see I'm working in humble surroundings even so you don't need a professional shop by any stretch of the imagination I really do not like working into these conditions but it's what I'm stuck with I had to get out of the shop that I was in and just threw up this little temporary structure um, I've got three quarter inch plywood on the ground um, and I'm able to function uh, and so so far it's it's working and I'll be able to get this motor done so you can do the same thing so anyway uh, enough talking I'm gonna start with a little little bit of a rundown on uh, what I've started doing on the block and we're just gonna move up from there so stay tuned guys